Hi, I'm Mike Ford. I'm founder of SiteMinder. Welcome to another roundup of the World Hotel Index, where we track uh, the global state of hotel bookings. Um, it's been about five months now since COVID became a reality for most of us. And while a lot remains unknown, what's clear is that you know new behaviors and preferences of today's travel are likely to linger for a while yet, if, if not to become actually permanent. Uh, we saw our sort of year-over-year -year bookings hit a low point in mid-April, where we saw 9% of last year's bookings, so a pretty dismal place. Uh, but after that, we witnessed an encouraging and actually consistent sustained recovery taking place until late July. So from the 9% in, in April, bookings um, rose until late July, continued to rise steadily, and they hit around 54% of last year's levels in late July. Um, unfortunately, though, since, since then, uh, booking levels have really plat plateaued and, and the recovery failed to progress any further than, than that 54% mark. Um, some of you may recall that in early May, we, we reported on signs that today's traveller would be seeking an immediate escape from the confines of, of their homes and, and the four walls of a building and holiday, you know, choose holiday destinations outdoors or, or leisure destinations. This actually continues to be the case is around the globe. We see travellers opting more and more for nearby coastal or country locations rather than the densely populated cities. And, and likewise, we, we see a, a sustained fall off of, um, of corporate type booking activity um, and much more in the way of leisure. So by way of example, in Australia, we see year over year bookings in Sydney at 23%. And with the latest recurrence of COVID in Melbourne, year over year bookings are actually 4%. Whereas if you look at places up the coast, for example, in Queensland, like Townsville, uh, we're seeing year over year bookings sitting at around 70% there. So very, very stark contrast. In Thailand as well, we see the capital city of Bangkok at 28% year over year booking levels, but 52% in the resort island of, of Koh Samui. So again, Quite a, quite a stark contrast there. In the UK, London's still sitting at around 40% of last year's booking volumes. But in, if you look at Bristol, which is only two and a half hours drive, you're at 76%. Um, in Spain, Madrid, Barcelona, they're hovering around 26% of year over year bookings, but more than 63% if you look at, at Malaga and the, that region. In the US, New York has not been able to rise about 14% of last year's volumes, but Tampa continues to see um, success with, with exceeding um, 2019 volumes on numerous occasions. Uh, we also reported on the rapid rise of last minute bookings uh, previously, and that trend continues. Um, in August and September, we're seeing half of all non-canceled bookings uh, made to date. So, the booking windows are really short. We're in August now and we're seeing um, more than half of bookings occurring this month and next. Um, play, there's, there's some extremes to that where in, in Canada, for example, August and September stays currently comprise 90% of all non-cancelled um, reservations. We continue to see some countries that were really struggling to um, recover at all. Um, we've actually seen them start to lift um, and positive trends um, upwards. So in Asia, we're seeing Indonesia over the last month or two has maintained steady growth led by domestic bookings, which have comprised three quarters of all the bookings since April. Um, in Europe as well, we see Portugal um, enjoying a, an acceleration in both domestic and international travel. And here at SiteMinder, we've, we've come to uh, a few conclusions around trends. You know, booking lead times have really shrunk. Now more than ever, extended stays are harder to secure. And every play with, player within the hospitality and travel industry needs to re-strategize accordingly. And a number of hotels have done really well to reimagine their spaces for corporate guests, but the reality is corporate travel is going to remain under pressure uh, for as long as domestic tourism is the only option or the safest option. You know, putting pressure on corporate travel is also uh, the change in the way we work. A lot of the a remote working um, situations that have developed around the world that companies have taken or opted for um, may remain more permanent even once we see a recovery. So there's a big question mark over you know the, the length of time in terms of um, how many years it takes for, for corporate to regain uh, previous levels if ever. 
uh, just because of the way we now work. Um, travel operators also need to be thinking about you know how leisure can 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 fill the gaps left left in the corporate space. And then I think we've we, you know certainly we're very conscious of our neighbour Fiji who where even hotels are, you know, I've, I've been getting messages from resorts that I've stayed at, which are saying, can, can we donate to help um, their staff because they're just not seeing any tourism come from Australia um, or New Zealand. And so there's huge, huge pressure and almost to the levels of humanitarian crises developing in some of the, the island states where, um, where they depend on, on, on neighbors such as Australia and New Zealand uh, who are still very locked down. And so it's really, really important that you know we develop these these you know whether it's even smaller travel bubbles but to try to support these nations um as long as long as we can keep that sensible so hopefully in the near future we'll start to see that emerge but recent flare-ups that have have sort of um i guess killed that idea for 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 the next uh, month or two we've seen for example in in costa rica you know how we're booking momentum is actually now up over a hundred percent month over month after international travel resumed on the 1st of August. So it's just so vital to these, these smaller countries that depend on tourism. An interesting development in, in um, my own home country of birth, um, South Africa, it's the only place that really surpassed Costa Rica as this month's fastest riser. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because it's got the fifth highest number of COVID cases, but as soon as, um, you know, restrictions uh, were lifted by the government, um, the, the country's booking momentum is up almost 300% month over month. So people desperate to get out, desperate to travel after lockdown, um, even even with surging cases. So that's it for this, this edition of the World Hotel Index update from our side. Please feel free to take a look around if you're already signed up. If you're not, please sign up on siteminder.com. And until next month, take care, look after yourselves. Thank you.